Hi everybody, it's Mr. So again, uh, talking about data management in grade two. And for data management in grade two, most of it is about learning how to draw graphs. Now, in our classroom, we talked about five things that need to be added to our graphs. Uh, the first one is our axis. Now, I tend to label them for the students. I don't expect them in grade two to know that these are called the Y and the X axis, but it will help them in their future mathematic uh, journey as they, as they learn about data management and about graphs in general. So it's good to know that this is the Y and this is the X. It doesn't, generally doesn't change. The next thing, oh and this part here can be used for almost every graph that they do. A pictograph, a bar graph, and a line graph. The only one is circle graphs, which tends to have a different change uh, being a circle. But they'll learn more about that when they're into higher mathematics. The second part is a scale. Now traditionally, uh, or what they're used to a scale is being uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, being that from grade 1 they're working with very simple numbers. However, uh, now that we're in grade 2, one, two, counting by 1s is not very efficient when you're thinking about maybe asking people, uh, 100 people or 25 people uh, or even uh, 50 people. You might want to think about counting by higher numbers so that your graph doesn't have to be all scrunched up all the way up. To, to those things. So, you know, counting by fives or twos might be appropriate. The other thing that, that students often do is they don't space their scale up the y-axis properly. Now the scale can also be in the x-axis, but it's generally in that y. So what I mean by that is that they'll put like five here, they may then do to ten, then they'll do like fifteen, then they'll do, uh, you know, twenty here. So you can tell that the scale is going to throw off what our picture of our data is going to represent, which then changes the perspective that people have when reading the graphs. And you can talk to your um, son or daughter about that uh, when looking at graphs in a newspaper or on the internet. Uh, talk about how, how the data looks uh, and what perspective they're given. So what you want to do is have an evenly spaced amount of things, which is hard to do sometimes without lines, but if they can visualize roughly where that line is, this will then help them out quite a lot. And what I try to do is the highest number I have is going to be near the top, so that my graph is going to have the expansion of the, uh, of the whole graph versus having a little tiny portion of that graph. The next thing that students need to have is labels and titles. Without labels and titles, you have no idea what these numbers mean or what the categories that we're looking at. So you need to make sure you have a title right at the top of the, you need to label these and normally a number of people, but if we don't say that it could be number of monkeys, it could be number of uh, uh, books that we counted, um, it all depends on what you're surveying. And of course you'll have your categories here, uh, let's just do our favorite colors, I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but we'll do our favorite colors and we'll label it blue pink, orange, and yellow. The next thing that you need to have is of course your data. Now this data is generally kept from a tally chart or from a survey that you've done before. So the students will then look at their data and see that um, maybe blue had uh, 20, um, pink had uh, 24, orange had 30, and yellow only had 5. Now when they're making the graphs, the last part is that it has to be neat. A messy graph tends to persuade people in other ways. So you're going to make sure you always use your ruler. And then they're going to take their number 20 and they're going to line it up with the 20 that's there. I'm going to draw their line up. and then fill in the colors. Now, a general mistake that a lot of students make is that they, the next one they do, like pink, being 24, they're like, I can't find 24 on my scale. Well, that's because we didn't count by ones, but you can imagine that 24 is roughly just underneath the 25. So you're gonna, you're gonna take your ruler, and draw it here. Sometimes what students do is they actually forget this line right here, and they do this. 
problem with that is that it's going to be very, very messy. So you need to actually forget about that line and, and just draw it straight down. Why don't you pause this video and try the next two, orange being 30 and yellow being 5 on your own. Welcome back. Um, so the last ones that we're going to finish up is to 30 and then 5 being right here. And so I hope your graph looks similar to that. That's data management making graphs uh, in our class in grade 2. Uh, the next portion of it would be to think about what does the graph tell us? Uh, being a bar graph, we have our maximum being 30 in orange and our lowest being yellow. But also we can think about comparing. There is 25 more orange people that like orange than yellow. Um, there's only five or six that like pink more uh, less than orange and the last one is to predict So this is our class. Do you think all the grade twos would be like that? Do you think the whole school would be like that? Why or why not? These are the types of questions that you should be asking as you look at graphs What do they actually tell you now that you've made them? Uh, if you have any questions feel free to contact me at any time, and I hope you have a pleasant day